the whole, as I've uh, mentioned to you at the beginning of the week, Imagination Week is a full of creativity, full of imagination, and of course, full of art artists. That is why since the beginning of Imagination Week in, two, in 2011, 2012, we have decided to have an artist in residence. To have an artist in residence in France, in Sergi Pontois campus, as well as in Singapore. And as you can see, as you can imagine, we have different artists. It's more than 15 artists over campuses. This year in Singapore, we have decided to invite Haina Abdul Hamhan, aka Arai Kreva. Arai Kreva is a full time creative dedicated to urban art and illustration, having worked with brands like Adidas, Culture Cartel, Patient Art, and Epigram Books. Her range of works span from picture book illustrating to installations and street art. She is the illustrator of Elizabeth Meets the Queen, a picture book that is part of the preeminent Singaporean series published by Epigram Books. It's a pleasure, it's an honor to welcome you in our campus and thank you very much for what you have done for us at the campus. Please welcome with me, Arai Kreva. Hi, good morning, everybody. I hope you all had a good week this week. I understand that everybody is very busy. I can see you guys like walking around the campus. Thank you for joining us um, and myself, picking with me, asking questions. I really appreciate it. Okay, so um, I'm going to give a interpretation of what it means to be an artist for myself and on the topic that you guys have been working on as well, which is shaping the political ecosystem 2050. Okay, so the theme that I worked with um, is about how do we function as a citizen in a community. So when we talk about the role of a citizen in the city, we are moving into function, synchronicity, um, and harmony. Um, I decided to go with the beehive colony idea, and I call it APIS. It is the idea of a spatial collective where the community shares the same values to grow. And the three pillars of APIS are sustainability, tax smart interdependent system to better yield on community, economic, environmental and health outcomes. So what that means is that you need all these points to better equip your community in a way that it does not lack uh, when it comes to technology, when it comes to basic things, commodity stuff like transport, health, um, economic stability. And then you have participation. You need to increase participation of each citizen to have a better process and more predictable and fair development. So what this means is that every citizen, you need to appreciate their opinions and you need to get them involved in order to better understand what they want uh, moving forward so it can encourage growth and the third one is synchronized visions and goals so by allowing communities to realize their visions to where and how they want to grow next so primarily the inspiration for this design came from the line who here have heard about the line Okay, that's great. So you, you guys know that they have started building it, right? So for me, this is a perfect example of what a successful community can be. So like with all the technology that's being presented, that's being discussed, that's been approved, they have collated even the right people to live in this community to make it a successful one. So you need to be able to contribute into uh, your environment here. So nobody does nothing. You're either a doctor, you're either a first responder, you're either 
a person who provide food or manage money even. Okay, so the design for it, they design it in such a way that in the barren um, area, they make use of what's available to create uh, such an interesting way of living where everything is connected and it's really long that stretch across uh, this side of the peninsula. Quite interesting. So I use this as an inspiration for my design and integrate it with the idea of a bee colony and came up with this. So basically I merged kind of like a utopian design with colony uh, mindset and how each role of the mem uh, members of the community, where, where everybody does its role really well in order to make it successful. Okay, so um, what it means to be an artist? Okay, first and foremost, uh, I'm more known in the industry as RI, or RI Preva, that's my moniker. My name is Raihana. So I am a multidisciplinary creative specializing in illustration and painting, more or less. I think it goes well together. I do traditional first. I was more trained in fine arts, but I hate the fine, the, the, the fine arts industry. I think it's all the, the gallery rules type thing with personal growth, but it's really slow. And the first thing I want to do when I started drawing, right, I want to make money. So how do I monetize my skills? And in the fine arts industry, you need to know who you need to know, and you need to work with different people. And I think that kind of function in that particular industry and scene is pretty boring to me and somewhat pretentious. I mean, yeah, you can, you can tell that fine artists, they, they work with their own personal space, they can get very close to So I didn't like that. I like to talk to people. I like to integrate different skills, I guess, and experiment. So and I like to do different techniques. I feel that if you explore enough, you can start to realize your style. And I'm one of the perfect examples of, um, what do we call it? Uh, jack of all trades, right? So I do a lot of different styles, but the reason for that is I like to adapt to different products. So if I'm drawing for a mural, it's a different style. If I'm drawing for a book, it's a different style. If I'm drawing for fabric printing, so the second, from the left is for a silk scarf that I did. So for me, in order to be able to adapt is very important. So I don't feel trapped in a box in a way. Some people feel like, oh, your style is not recognizable. And people find it hard to connect because like they can't tell like, hey, did I write this? Maybe I see her style in it somewhere like very familiar, but you can't really tell. To me, that's fine. So like my clientele base is like quite wide, so I quite like that. I also founded my creative collective called Diplomat, spelled as D P L M T. So we have uh, seven people now. Started as five. Basically, we wanted to do things outside of the office. Within the office, your boss can tell you, "Oh no, this idea doesn't work. This idea is stupid. This idea is like I don't know." Does it cost money? How much does it cost? Like, it's redundant. Just do your job. You know, so we wanted to get out of the office and do a lot of experimental stuff. And we did. So we get to do and work with Sketchers, Adidas, um, Apple. Quite interesting. And we have experimented a lot with augmented reality as well. And we're not just doing clientele work mirror work. We do a lot of workshops and other stuff. So like for me, I cannot separate myself from Diplomat because we started and founded it together and I feel it's 
very precious and I really want it to grow as well as I did. Okay, so like I said, I do a lot of mirror art, illustration and augmented reality. All these are applicable within my industry for different reasons. So if, let's say for spatial art, location-wise, they want to make the environment a little bit more inviting, I guess. So imagine you walk into a space and you're welcomed by a big wall of art and it tells the story of the neighborhood or it tells the story of the location or like guests coming in, they see the walls like, oh, that's a really huge artwork compared to like frames of motivational posters or some of the, I think one of the bank that we did, it was quite bare, it's quite white, quite white walls, a lot of it and they wanted to like spruce up the place, make it a little bit more fun, you know, as guests enter the door. So for different reasons, digital illustration um, comes with branding, comes with some of uh, the agency works that I do as well. And augmented reality is just like a marketing tool that all these um, agencies like to have. So your Instagram filter, your Facebook filter, yeah, we do those, um, can be quite good as an interactive piece. So that was an interesting journey, like going into, like transitioning from just drawing on paper to digital illustration to working with my crew on a lot of this like tech integration with art. Okay, so why am I an artist? Okay, I don't want to go into the most cliche way of saying that I've been drawing since I was a kid. Everyone draw when they were when when they were a kid. So how did I pick it up? I actually sucked as a kid, you know, drawing, just drawing, copying different cartoons. So Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, Casper, The Mask, whatever we see on Saturday cartoons, you know, that's what I drew. No internet, just things that. I see like Animaniacs, I love drawing Animaniacs. Just trying to copy as much as I can, trying to sketch as much as I can. So I didn't have much training until secondary school. That's where I really picked it up and I thought that, okay, since I can do it well, how can I be better? So if I wanted to do it better, what can I do? So ping pong back and forth. Do I want to do this full time? Do I want to? Can I make money? It's very important. I feel that the skill set that I have, I need to be able to monetize it. Um, I think the drive is quite strong, even though I came from a business background. So it went like backwards. I went commercial. So working in the industry as a marketing executive for three years like killed me. My, my motivation was zero. I didn't want to go to work. I felt like, okay, I need to do something. So that's why I decided that, okay, let's give this a go, change industry, train to be an artist. Then I went to NAFA and they had an illustration course. So I was like thinking, okay, this could be it because I didn't want to do fine arts. In Singapore, at least, the fine arts industry is quite stale. If you are an artist, you have to do residencies everywhere in order to get your name up, in order to get people to be interested in your works. So as for me, I started out doing various styles. I do sculpture, I do uh, ball pen illustration, I do watercolour, I did um, leather art. So all these are uh, things that I practiced along the way trying to make my mark somewhere but I didn't know who I really was I was just experimenting with a lot of different stuff which is cool you know like you got to develop your portfolio in a way I think it applies to everything you do your portfolio places that you've been people that have spoken to who you know how you know where you know so your contacts when you network the people you talk to, just keep a very close 
relationship if you want to know more from them, learn from them, you know, being mentored, if they want to share. So for me, I talk a lot with my favourite artists in Singapore. Some of them, they do reply, some of them they don't, it's fine. So I'm just getting a lot of tips, you know, on how to become a better artist. And I think apart from that, I was just practicing a lot. So I practice on my drawing or my painting, just trying to create like somewhat of a good flow in my portfolio so that it's not all over the place. And I started to get more into digital art recently, where I dived in into creating NFT projects. So this was very interesting. So NFT projects, um, it can be a singular one of ones or generative. Anybody here dabble with NFTs? No? Okay, this is gonna be interesting. Why? Yes! Who do you follow? Uh, I just follow two or three. You what? Back in 2018, I just bought two or three. Um, Wh which project? Like just random stuff. Ah, stuff. okay. No, it's okay. Now, still bear market, so it's fine. <laughs> Wait till bull market. Bull market will be quite impossible. Okay, so NFT is very interesting. And as an illustrator, as a creative, we work with the founders and try to create a project in such a way that the marketing needs to be very, very strong. So we are also, um, on our end, practicing our marketing skills, practicing our people skills when we talk to the community who buy the project. And the amount of work that goes into it, it is beyond just art, you know. It's all everything encompassing, imagine it as an event or as a program or a campaign. You still have to talk to the people that is interested in the things that you are presenting and make sure that you develop a community from that. Okay, so um, I think Going into my third year after I graduated from art school, I decided to do more uh, bigger art. Because to me, if I, I keep my work behind the desk, it's not going to go anywhere. So we decided to, okay, I'm going to do murals. How am I going to start? I don't know. So I just picked like competitions. I joined a lot of competitions. I joined a lot of gallery shows, a lot of like pop-up showcase and they picked it up and said, okay, you want to do mirror? Can I have a wall for you? And they gave it to me. So this was for Night Safari. It was for the um, SJ55 bilateral uh, anniversary with Japan, Singapore and Japan together and decided to use um, Ultraman as their mascot. This was situated at Night Safari for their scavenger hunt. So it's quite interesting. I could have made it into a UV piece, but they didn't have the black light with them. Okay, so progressing into workshops, doing um, pop-up shows at Art Science Museum. So it got really very interesting as my journey went through, uh, went through like a, a change with Diplomat at least. So, Five brains is better than one, I feel. So everybody contribute, you know, it's the same as the ecosystem 2050, right? Everybody does their job, everybody contributes, and five brains working together makes an even stronger team. So this applies to everyday life, I feel, where if you have a couple of friends, you know, in a group with you, you can, if you decided to go into like a project and everybody put in their input, you banter, you argue, it's fine. Laugh about it afterwards. Important is everybody get their thoughts out. Everybody get their opinions out. No offense to anybody, you know. Let's not get our feelings hurt. We are just trying to banter ideas, just to get the best solution. So this was for Mitt Smith. If you guys like burgers, you can go to Meet Smith at um, Telo Ai Street. They have really good burgers. So this burger was for their anniversary and they really did this. We call it the Everything Burger. 
and they made it into like a tower for their anniversary. So I tried a lot of different style of painting, like anamorphic, trick eye. That was a bit, but I would, I think I wouldn't do it again because it was really very difficult. Okay, so going back to how did I become an artist? I switched from business school, did marketing for three years, got, got bored of it, and I decided to go full on um, artist after I graduated from art school. I think the process for being in a residency is how you communicate with the audience. So audience meaning like, I were to do like a pop-up like this, okay, and I want to make my visitors happy. What kind of integration can I use apart from nostalgia, apart from memory, how can I interact with them in such a way that they can use my pop-up or my uh, installation and have fun with it? To me, that makes a successful interaction. So I made a slide, I made a giant bed where they told bedtime stories on it. And here, you can see like the aunties are looking at the patches, right? So we went through a workshop where they had to create over 500 patches. I provided all the materials and they crafted their own version of a patch and I sewed it together into a giant quilt. Difficult, I will never do it again, but it was interesting as a process. I learned a lot. Um, Sewing-wise, putting things together, organizing the workshop, talking to different people and how they want it done, the organization, what's the expectation. All these are all like day-to-day -day growth, I feel, how I can maneuver myself better, you know, as an artist in the industry. So I did F1 as well. This was cool. And this car, you guys, is $5 million. Crazy. And I get to design it, so happy. Okay, so any questions before I move on? Like, do you have any questions about the art industry or any questions pertaining to creative process or how if you want to dabble or you want to integrate business and art? No? Okay, so let's move on with creative process. For me, I think it leads by example. So if you can get or follow your role model really closely, really well, I think that can give you that push, that drive, that idea or motivation to you know, grow within your your specialization. If you have a certain skill, you know, follow that person, follow their process. I feel there's nothing wrong with, you know, identifying what works for you. You know, that can really help you along the way. Because you guys still have um, a lot of experiences to, to go through. So why not just pick example from somebody who has went through it and use that in your favor. So for me, I follow these artists a lot. Um, Kipto, Nitros, Clock Two, Ron English, Tristan Eaton. To me, like how they think, right? It's so interesting. And how they draw and how they tackle a layout is also very interesting. So that for me I can use that as my skill set. And for different application, I guess, you know, what works for the space that could be beneficial. At least I'm not just thinking in a tunnel vision, okay, I hate that. And when you're in a tunnel vision, you can't really expand your thoughts, you can't really get inspired. Okay, let's talk about imposter syndrome, okay. I had that for a very long time, I didn't think that I was good. I didn't think I suck, 
but denial, right? Best friend. So I did what I had to do. 2017, somebody asked me to do a picture book. This was horrible, man. I hated the whole process because number one, I only did well for the cover, I think. And then 32 pages, that's 16 spread. After you get from the fifth page, right, you'll be like, why am I doing this? Why do I do this to myself? I hate this. This is so hard to draw. Like, uh, like I was cursing it's very near, I was like procrastinating, like they were like texting me, so, alright, any updates, any sketches, I'm like ignoring, no, I don't want to reply, denial, best friend again. So I went through it. Colouring sucks. I never want to show this as in my portfolio ever. Like, have you done any other picture books? Uh, only these ones. Oh, I heard you did Alice's work, no? You know, because it was so bad and to be honest, I'm glad I went through it because I learned a lot. I learned how to lay out better, I learned how to draw better, I learned how to communicate the narration into visuals better. Learn from it, they came back to me, alright, actually I love your stuff. Can you do this book? How many people? Okay, interesting. It's about the first Chinese migrant to Malacca, which is in Malaysia. Last time, the whole of Malaysia is called Malacca. So, my dad is from Malacca, so I felt an instant connection. I said, okay, I want to do this. Let's see. I read the script, banging, love it. I could already visualize what I wanted to draw. And then I saw like, okay, but alright, there's certain things we want you to highlight. The jewellery, the clothes, the buildings, the kampong houses. And I'm like, okay, let me try. Bam, woodwork. What the hell, like, that killed me, you know, like. Then you've got the outfit, very intricate. If you guys uh, have a chance to go and find out what Nyonya Kebaya is, go see the intricate embroidery on the artwork. Like for me, I'm a perfectionist when it comes to illustration. Like, I like to make it look legit. If it's not legit, don't draw. You know, don't go like halfway and then you try to simplify. No, don't do that. So, though, this was a long three months for 32 pages. It was hard, but I think looking back, if put side by side like this, Comparison, right? What is Elizabeth Mr. Queen? Nothing. I've outgrown it. I went past it. Did better works. So, you know, as a personal development, I feel that it's essential to learn from your failures. It's fine. You know, if you fall, if you feel that you didn't do a good job, just ignore it. You know, the next time you get the opportunity, just do better. Okay, when we started using spray cans, right, again, we suck. We don't know what to do. We just painted how we feel, techniques out the window, no clue. Picked up the spray can and just worked at it. And down the line, you know, you get to learn from the OGs who are there painting with you. So when we paint, we paint on a public wall at Somerset Skate Park. If you guys are in Orchard, go check out the skate park. There's two free walls, there's two public walls down there that you can paint, but there are rules. If you guys want to know more about street art culture in Singapore, uh, you can DM me uh, on my Instagram, I will answer all your questions. If you're interested for a paint jam as well, also DM me, I'll bring you guys up. Okay, I think this one, funny story, yeah. let me just share with you guys. We just picked up spray painting first day and we got this job by Adidas. It was for a real showcase for the shoe... What's the shoe? Profier. Okay, it was a Profier showreel pop-up and they wanted street art. I said, okay, let me take out my brush and paints. No, no, no brush and paints. Can you guys do spray painting? And my teammate was like, okay, let's go practice a bit. 
wait, what? I took out like four or five colors. We did the design. We went for a practice, which was this one. Okay, we only practiced for one day, one time, three hours. Guess what? The project was next day. And we were like, can we do this or not? I don't know. I don't know how to handle this prepaid. Wait, are you sure we're doing this? Two hours into it, we were still sketching. No idea, no clue. But fake it till you make it, right? But don't let them know. You gotta exude the confidence to make your clients know that you know what you're doing. But inside, internally, we are panicking, like, screaming internally, you know? I was like, complaining to my team member, bow here, like, like, dude, I don't even know how to do a straight line. Thin line, no less. Okay, then my other team member was like, no, you make a mistake, you just cut back with the other color. So you imagine like, it's like erasing, but with the, the color beside it. Okay, learn something new, cutting back. Spray, spray. Something is happening, like, I don't know why, like, I can't visualize it up close because it's large, right? And it's very hard to kind of like step back when there's no way to step back. Behind me was this fence. So I can't step back to look at my progress or see if I did something wrong. We drew grid. So when we drew grid according to the artwork, that's where the line falls, that's where the color falls. Learn something new again. So by, this was a two-day event. By the end of it, we were like, okay lah, I think we can do this. You know, so that fake it till you make it only happens when you learn something in the process. That makes you grow. And that actually helps with what you want to do afterwards, whether you decide to develop this skill set or you want to develop a project that you're working on or you want to develop like a certain type of flow that you're working with, maybe it's like your personality talking to a client, you know, your demeanor talking to uh, a group of people, whatever skill that you're working on. I think that learning point, that learning key factor is, it needs to be very wide and open. Okay, so along the way, we got better, practiced a lot more, came out with the guys to practice our our style, I would say. So we can see the progress, you know, happening along the way. And we were doing jobs, mural jobs in between as well. So that gave me the assurance thinking that, okay, so Diplomat is actually going into the right direction and I'm going into the right direction because I'm learning as well through my team members. They teach me things that I don't know. I also teach them things that they don't know. So. To me, the seven of us, I'm learning from six different people. That is a win. And every one of us has different skill set. And if I can pick up and manifest something from each of six of them, uh, to me, like lifelong learning, man, that's, that, that, that's great. Okay, so current and future direction for me and my team is we are doing a lot of NFT projects at the moment. We are trying to create more exciting unbranding projects. So an unbranding is basically taking what we know about marketing and branding and flip it. You know, we are doing a lot of kit bashing right now. So if you take like a box of... Okay, this is going to be crude. Huh? Imagine if it's a box of condoms, you know the flavours, right? Imagine if it's a chicken flavor, you know, like mind F everything and you do it as a marketing project. Then it'll make it interesting and people will be like, what? Chicken flavor, how does that work? Come up with the visuals, come up with the marketing outline, come up with possibilities, come up with the mascot. Interesting way to look at it, whether to make it happen into a real product, that's the question. So to us, it's like we are keep bashing and unbranding products this year. We want to launch something that can really put us 
in a position where like we want to attract clients from different industry, not just from agencies anymore. We want to expand our clientele. So I guess the only way is to just shock the scene. You know that will bring some eyes to us. Uh, you know they, 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 they can talk to us and get share our ideas. You know and yeah. So apart from that will be the NFT projects. So that is a whole another thing. If you want to know more about NFTs, uh, you can come and talk to us as well. Val dive in a lot more than me, so he will know more. And thank you for your time. <laughs>